Welcome to episode 69 of Ring Talk. Myself, Mike Theobald, and with Steve Goodwin. Evening. Thank you very much for tuning in. Later on, you're going to be able to hear from the new Southern Area Cruiserweight Champion, Nick Parper, uh, as well as Mark Butler and his coach are going to come along and have a chat with us. And you're going to start to see some footage um, that's going to be inserted into some of this. Mm -hmm. As well as, if you go on to the Goodwin Boxing YouTube channel, you'll start to see some high quality footage of the fights from Saturday night. Um, which is a bit of a change of, um, well, not a change, but a new thing that Goodwin Boxing are doing, right? Yeah, because we wanted to, we've just been testing a few things out. We're not going to go stream live, we're never going to do that. But we will bring some fights um, delayed onto the YouTube channel. And we've done it this week without commentary, but as you know, you were testing it out. And we will be filming fights from now on with commentary as well. A handful of them, not all of them. Not all of them, and, there, and not all the fights will go out online but it will be footage that we can use for boxers as well in the future. Yeah, so, so if you go on to the Goodwin Boxing YouTube channel, you'll be able to find the Yusuf Kamari fight, the Angelo Benevon Lacqua fight, uh, the Neon fight, the two title, well, the English Eliminator and the Southern Area yeah. fights. Uh, the whole fights of each of those yes. are going to be available on the YouTube channel for Goodwin Boxing, Yeah, which is great, and they're filmed in nice high definition, uh, up from a decent angle on the balcony. As you said, at the moment, it's going to be all the, the sound of the crowd, but uh, in time, some of those will have commentary. I'm not going to go back and do those ones, no. but going forward, some of them will have commentary. Yeah. Um, also within this, you're going to find that there's an interview with Josh Burnham, yeah. who's the coach of Nick Parper, um, and there's going to be an interview with Curtis Felix after he won his, uh, his uh, Eliminator for the English Welterweight title. And there's going to be an interview with Umar Sadiq, who came along and was on your show and highly impressive on Saturday night. Yeah. Um, so just a little taste of some of the, the different things you're going to see going on here, uh, in case you get too confused as to why they're there. <laughs> um, so before we go on to Saturday night, you've got two fighters taking part in, uh, in matches this Saturday yes. night. Started down the 2 Florian Mark, who has his fourth professional fight on the Frank Warren card, he fights Tommy Broadbent, who's uh, got a winning record. I think it's eight and four from memory. Right. Um, He's coming, not mucking about, is he, coming, Florian? No, he wants to fight. He wants to fight, <laughs> he'll fight anybody. Um, Tommy Broadbent is coming down. Florian was concerned that he wouldn't try. He said, "I don't want him. I don't want somebody coming down and not trying." So we had to get assurances from Tommy Broadbent that he'd have a go, because Florian said, "I don't want somebody running for me. I want somebody to fight me." I thought somebody who's just trying to survive. Yeah. So they've said he's, they think he can win. So Flores says, bring him down then. If he thinks he can win, ha, ha, ha. He said, uh, <laughs> I think the quote was, if he thinks he's going to, if he really comes for me, he goes in one. If he doesn't, I'll probably get him in two. Right, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> you know his mentality going in. Let's see how it goes. Listen, mate, he's a, Tommy's a good fighter, so we'll see. But it's a good test for Florian at this stage. So really excited to see him on Saturday. What is it about Florian? Like, I know he's got the MMA background, yeah. but after three fights, why is he so confident to... Because he doesn't need these fights, because he sells a shed load of tickets. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to be taking risks this early on in his career. He said, I don't have credibility if I don't fight people with good records who are coming to try it. And he said, like, when he's been fighting, when he's had people that, um, when he's had the first fight in the UK where he had a traditional journeyman, he wasn't, that's all we could get. Then he thought somebody was 4-0 or 3-0. Yeah, the or C's guy, yeah. 4-0 with 4 KOs or whatever it was. So he got rid of him. And now he just wants to fight people who are coming, coming to fight. So this is all he wants. He just wants, he wants to show that he's good. And he said, if I can't beat these people, I won't box again. Fair enough, I like that attitude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's... He's an Albanian sensation, isn't he? He's, yeah. Uh, Copy like that. I'll give it he's to him. Great. Nice. No, so we're looking forward to that. And we've got Sajid Abid fighting over uh, in Saudi. Yeah, this is like mad. A little On bit, the other card of the Amir Khan, Billy <laughs> Dib fight and the Prince Patel world title fight. And uh, <laughs> Fury, Samuel Fury, Samuel Peters. Samuel Peters. And, yeah, it's all, it's all bizarre what's going on over there. But he's part of it. He's enjoying it. He's loving it. And I hope that he... It all goes well for him and he benefits from it and he comes back and we'll get him down to talk about it when he comes back about the whole experience. Good luck to him. Yeah. His uh, door's opened up and he's gone through it. And he's one of the nicest kids you'll ever meet as well. Yeah. So nice. So nice. But you know, there's there aren't that many opportunities for young boxers like that mm -hmm. to somehow end up on a platform that is headlined by Amir Khan. And do you know, when it all came out, I said, you know, we're sitting thinking, is this real? Is this really going to happen? Is it, you know, so... Like, to be honest, I said to him, you've got to take a plunge because 
you've got to, if you want to do it, it's got to be down to your decision because if it all goes belly up and pear shaped, you know, I can't, we, we can't guarantee it. it doesn't come under any board control, it doesn't come under this, it doesn't come under that. But he really wanted to do it, so full credit to him. He's over there and so far so good. Awesome. So good luck to Sir Jim. Good luck for this weekend. On uh, Saturday? Saturday, I think it's. Yeah. Um, right, so we'll go on to Saturday night down at York Hall. Yeah. What was a hot York Hall, which mm-hmm. we'll touch on in the QA. Um, Great. I thought it was a good, good card, though. Did I you really think? enjoyed it. Like, I didn't get to sit and watch much of it because I was busy um, backstage with Room Master Deek. I was doing some commentary with Kev. I was doing some interviews with fighters. Um, and Did you enjoy it? I, yeah, I had a brilliant time. An absolute That's blast. Nice. I had a real. When I left your call Saturday night, it was like a feel good. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you prefer do? Do you prefer that than just sitting ringside? Then I said to my wife actually on the Sunday, I said, I don't think I could do that every time because I do. I love sitting and watching it. All the right. reason I started doing what I, like sitting and writing about these fights is because these lads don't have people mm-hmm. covering their fights. And I always found it great when I'd see on like Facebook, one of them had um, grabbed like my write up of theirs mm-hmm. and put it up and said, "There's what happened in my fight last night." But I kind of feel like doing that has almost moved on a little bit because there were a lot of video interviewers and things that weren't there when I started writing about boxing. Mm. There's a lot more people that cover the small hall scene now that give these lads exposure that was never there four or five years ago. Mm. Um, Boxing Domination, the lad that was backstage doing interviews with any old fighter that he could get his hands on, brilliant, fair play to him. Um, So, but I I do like sitting and watching fights and writing on them, Mm. Um, but I also enjoyed doing that. So Do a bit of both. Yeah, (laughs) and I enjoyed doing the commentary with Kev. and yeah, like, it was just running around all night, really. And I enjoyed doing the cornering and yeah. all these things. So, yeah, I, I, you know, shit at all of them. But no, I, no, we're good. <laughs> no, you're, all very, trained, no, you're it? very good. You're uh, very good at everything. Um, but yeah, it was good fun. Um, but yeah, just a mad night, really. So, um, we'll start off with the action on Saturday, which was Neon Samuels. I'm just going through the, it's in the order that they fought on the night, right. um, but the order that I've got them written down. Neon Samuels made his debut. Another one whose footage you can check out on the YouTube channel. Yeah, I mean, Neon, um, his first thing he said to me after the, the fight was, that was a hard fight for a debut. <laughs> <laughs> and I matched him with Ziggy Bookvickius. And, uh, Anyway, this book Vecchius comes out like, watch the fight, it's a brilliant fight, so go on to YouTube channel and watch this was fight. Was he the one that was on before Tony Banj? Yes. Yeah, because I stood with Tony Banj's coach backstage, uh, you know where the curtain is, yeah. me and Tony Banj's coach were watching it going, that kid is fucking tough, Ziggy. Yeah. Like, he's brought this tonight. So what happened was, he came out and I thought, oh my God. And it was a fight and a half. It's a fight you've got to watch. It was just four rounds, brutal four rounds. Take 15 minutes to go and watch yeah. it. Yeah, and I thought to myself when I watched it, what the effing hell is going <laughs> on here? Because I pride myself, I always say, kid, on your debut, we're going to match you with a traditional journeyman, darby, 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 darby. And I put this kid in some war, right? So anyway, the fight finishes, and I go to the coach, what was that? He said, oh, didn't you know he's on report? He said he basically could lose his license unless he puts up good performances. Oh. So it was shit or bust for him, Ziggy, that night. No wonder he came out like a lunatic. I see. So, but I didn't know that. I, was, I wouldn't have made the fire. Yeah. So he was like a loony, and Neon just about scored it. 39 38. But what a fire. But I just need to apologise to him because I didn't mean to put him in a fight like that. It had a lesson, isn't it? That you'll yeah. know for the debuts, find out. <laughs> If they're Can't on report. A report, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a, a cracking. I say, I watched it kind of peeking through the curtains at the back of your call. And yeah, it was. Me and Tony Band just coached stood there thinking, Kim L. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, a disappointing one. Sam Smith drew over four with Vidi, yeah, uh, Vida Massey. Yeah. So, the bottom line with. That fight was Massey Carter had been stopped by Chantel Cameron. I was looking to um, give Sam a big opportunity and a big fight later in the year. 
So she'd had two fights cancelled on her up north, so we put her quickly onto this show. She'd been really, really ill the week before. I didn't yeah. know until after the fight, but really ill. But because she needed to get this win, she went through with the fight. And she won the first two rounds, despite not looking her normal self. And um, She didn't have that pop in her shorts no, that she would normally have. she was ill. Uh, but then she got very tired and lost the last... Well, I actually didn't think she lost the last two. I thought she nicked the first I had a three really one up. I say she won 3-1, I thought she won 3-1. I was absolutely nearly fell through the floor where the ref gave it a draw. I thought, despite the fact she was ill, she won the fight. But a draw is quite damaging for her in the current situation. Because um, it means that what I was planning to do for her, I can't do. Yeah. But I thought she should have won the fight. And, and I know you say about hometown scoring and all of that stuff. And sometimes you don't get it. But my God, that was... That wasn't hometown scoring, that was the opposite. It was where you've given every benefit to the away fire, and I thought Sam won that fire. But what can you do? The judge, the referee's scoring it as he sees it, but I think nine of, if you gave it to ten refs, nine would have scored it for Sam. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd agree. Uh, and I say objectively, <laughs> it's hard to be objective because Sam's such a, a lovely woman and you wish her all the good in the world. I was chatting to her before um, her fight and I yeah, gave her a cuddle around the side and chatted to her about her kids and uh, you know how she feels bad about, you know, she's sometimes been in a bad mood of a kid, all this stuff that you like. Everything about her is a good person and you just want good things to happen for her and it didn't on Saturday night. So we've got to get back to the drawing board, go and win another fight, and then we'll regroup and go again. Yeah. Um, William Webber. I think he's really good. I, I love William Webber. I think... I'm a know, big fan of the moment. You as well. You like me. I just think... He, I just think... I want to be able to show at the end of his career what happens when he goes from being on a TV promoter show and perhaps not... Well, no, it's not perhaps wasn't being looked after properly because nobody knew what they were putting him into to go in with somebody who actually cares and works with his dad uh, and his co and his other coach and, and and actually cares about him and builds him properly and I think we're going to demonstrate how a kid that's had such a reversal that was not his fault in the early part of his career um, can be done can be d built up properly and looked after properly he will could easily be British title level and beyond. Yeah, and he's still a young man who's, you know, growing. Do you know, just take just nice time. Same as Ricky Evans. Take time. Yeah. Um, Kieran Leinster. Well, lost. Kieran, uh, he lost 39-38 to Victor Dagger. I mean... He'd stop inviting Victor back. He's got a couple of wins now, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was 39-38. I had Kieran nicking it. Others didn't. Um... I think look, the thing with that is he's got to get straight back in the ring with Victor and go and get that sorted yeah. out. And I spoke to Kieran after the fight. He took it well. Um, he just wants to get the rematch done and get it sorted out and put his career back on track. And I think he will do that. It was just one of those things. I mean, I, I haven't watched the fight back, so I'm not going to say it was robbery or anything like that. I don't think it, it was. But I think Kieran done enough to nick it. Yeah. Um, talking to people that are chasing rematches, Ricky Evans uh, got the win, but not against the opponent that he wanted. Now, Dwayne Green got stopped the week before by Donovan Mortlock. So, Ricky, I thought Ricky looked good. Um, moved to 8-1-1. One, and one. Now, I think we go for the Dwayne Green fight, hopefully again in September, and he writes the wrong, and then we can bed the only... Uh, get a revenge on the only loss on his record and move on. Put a line through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dominic Felix, Big Dom. Um, Fort Louis Van Pooch. Dom's not managed by me, he's managed by Earl Johnson. Obviously, brother to Curtis, it was a big night for the Felixes. Dom's a great guy. He's a lovely bloke. Really Dom, nice mate. guy. The family's lovely, they're a lovely family. And it was great to see him get a win because the last time he fought on our show, he fought Dwayne Sinclair. Yeah. And to be honest, gave Dwayne enough trouble. Dwayne couldn't get rid of him, and he, but, it, but he did take a bit of a hammering in the fight in the end. So it was great to have Dom back as a home fighter and go and get his win. Good on him. Good on him. Well done, Dom. Um, Ryan Copland. First fight Kevin fight. McCauley. I was really impressed with Ryan. That was one of the ones that Kevin and I were trialling the yeah. uh, commentary on. and Really impressed, actually, with Ryan. Considering he's in his 30s, he's only had one fight before. And he's come to. He came to. He, he's joined us. Funny thing about Ryan was he originally signed with me, right? And then changed his mind and went somewhere else. 
And then came back after one fight. And then came back after one fight. And I think he's happy he came back. So for Ryan, um, the people often, know, you know, I don't think, I don't have anything against him. You get told something and people think that might be better for them and it's not. So, you know, he's back and we'll hopefully get him out again in September and just build him up and we'll have to move quickly with him because of his age, but there's no reason we can't get him a title shot. Cool. Um, Bradley Spencer went to Fordham. Yeah. Uh, beat Robbie Chapman. Who first fought, lost for Robbie. Yeah, Robbie, Robbie had a, was see, he fought the week before and beat Terry Zunke and um, it was as if he was very flat. Yeah. Robbie was very flat. But Bradley boxed very well, so credit to Bradley. Yeah, uh, goes to four and zero, keeps building his state of mind, yeah. um, and credit to all that state of mind block: Brian G, Sean Ells, and Barry O'Connell. Brilliant people. Um, because they were so busy all night, all of them. You know, because some of them, then like Brian G, was off with Daniel Mendez, but um, when they're together, like you can see, they've got a real understanding of what they're doing. Then they've got Anthony Agogo down with them now as yeah. well, kind of. Not tagging along, that's the wrong word, but you know, it's helping out, giving advice, yeah, exactly. That you know, <laughs> in between rounds, getting told off by board officials because he's standing up and, and yeah. told Sean something. Um, but you can see that they're a well drilled unit, and it's not a surprise that they're bringing through a stable of fighters that are doing particularly well. Um, so great, just great team, great credit team. to all of them. Yeah. Um, Tony Banj went to eight and oh, no, he didn't. No, that's a lie. Sorry, he lost on points. Um, <laughs> just reread it. He lost forty thirty six. Yeah, lost every round on points. I don't know what went wrong. He said that he felt pain in his eye in the second round, and he just didn't feel like right. it. Just wasn't him. He's had a t- he had a terrible day at the office. Yeah. Um, I have texted him to make sure he was okay. Um, he said he's fine, um, but it was just it just wasn't him, and it was just, I don't know what happened. Yeah. And that's what you can say about it, really. That's all I can say. But he was okay after... I mean, obviously going to be gutted and disappointed, but... He, no, he was gutted and disappointed. I'll say he felt he was all... He, he, he had a late change of opponent, um, which was gutting for him. He was due to fight uh, Serge Giuliotta from Norwich. Um, but it was a change of opponent. Um, and the guy was tougher than the original opponent. But I would have expected Tony to be able to handle him. Okay. Um, Terry Conroy gets the award for the only stoppage of the night. Yeah, he done well. He's Derek Granger's charge, and to be fair, he looked very good. He shook sharp and fast, and um, full credit to him on his win. He's not my fighter, but you know, he's a, he he's a, he brought a good crowd. Yeah, he was very. They, they were very good to deal with. You know, he's you know, very you professional. Back. 100%. He's back in September. All right. September 28th. Yeah, I enjoyed watching him. Actually, I thought he was good. Terry. He's back again in September. Um, <laughs> my man Angelo Bevilacqua I can never get his that was a fire yeah. and that's another one of those fights that are going on YouTube he was in the changing room and I walked in and he's like ah oh, you think I'm crazy man I'm like yeah you fucking are <laughs> you are crazy in the nicest way possible it's not an insult but he proved it again on Saturday night what a fire the man's mad like you can see why Conor Ben has him in for sparring because they must have some Tear ups, some tear ups. <laughs> but he's he's there. He's getting there. He's now. Um, we've got. We're about two more two more fights away from realistically going somewhere in the title. So he's got to get two more wins under his belt, and then we'll start having a proper conversation with him. Yeah. If you want a fighter to get behind, who's fun to watch, who's all these things, go and watch that Angelo Bevilacqua fight because the guy is just he brings a fight. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Yusuf Kamari went to 9-0. Yeah, I've said everything I need Shout to say. Yusuf, he's won again. He's won every round again. He's beaten a good kid who's seven and seven. Who's you know he's not got a negative record. You know he looks classy. He looks like he's growing. Between myself and Savvy, we're planning the perfect. We're planning the perfect career for him. He's a star in the making and a champion in the making. And he's such a nice lad as well. Yeah, I'm having a good chat. But he's still young. Yeah. Again, he doesn't. So we've got to build him. It's about delivering these fighters at the right time. Yeah, yeah. He's not getting carried away with it. I was chatting with him just afterwards. Gets it, doesn't he? Just gets it. Yeah, everything about him. But it, I didn't actually get to see much of his fight because I was rushing about a bit. But he, he just looked class, which he is. The fights on this. This one, the fights on YouTube, so you can go and watch it. There you go. I should go and find it. Um, Umar Sadiq. 
Well, I'll tell you what, you're better to comment on that <laughs> because you were in the corner. I was. Uh, beat Daryl Sharp, 60-54. And he did a number on Daryl as well. Um, and I heard back from Daryl's team about that was hard. They said that is that was a hard night's work for them. Um, and Daryl's been in with some notable names and he's, you know, he's a solid competitor. Jake Paul a couple of weeks ago, for example. Yeah. Um, but... <laughs> it was a privilege to work in that corner. Um, Umar's, you know, he was with Brian O'Shaughnessy, uh, and he's no longer. But just to see the preparation, the setup, everything that goes into his performance on the night, it's easy when you're watching it on TV just to think the night starts when they hit the ring walk and when they get into the ring. It's not the case at all, you know. The night starts six hours before that mm. um, certainly on one of these shows as well the night starts long before that and you've got to get your timings right for when you're warming that fighter up and <laughs> they were quite lucky I'm not to blow my own trumpet but I could sit and work through the running order and say right that's probably going to go that far that far that far. so I could give them some form of local knowledge mm. as to how long they've probably got before um, but it's a real privilege he boxed to order superbly um, you know, if they were telling him to go upstairs, downstairs, give me three, he was doing everything that was asked of him from his corner. If they were telling him to, um, you know, speed up, you know, a minute left, they'd say, right, now build it up, build it up, build it up. He was doing everything that they told him to do. I don't think they could have been happier with his performance. I know he wasn't happy with it. He was okay with it, but he thought he should have got Daryl out of there. Um, he, I said to him, but you know, he's only been stopped once in his career, Daryl, and you know, he's been in with so many people. <laughs> Umar said, I so many people aren't Umar Sadiq. That's what he said. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, fair play. Like, you've got that self belief and confidence, and you know, all he wanted. It, there's not all he, all he wanted was the win, but what he really wanted was the stoppage. It didn't come, but he didn't go looking for it. He just mm. he he beat <clears throat> Daryl comprehensively. Do you know what's next for him? Um, no, I don't. Um, I think he will be back on a Frank Warren show uh, in the new season. He hurt his left hand a little bit. It wasn't broken or anything, but he just said Daryl's head was so hard. He said it was the hardest head he's ever punched, and he punched it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no he will be back but you know, all the talk of the Zach Chelly rematch I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon um, not because he doesn't want to fight Jack Zach Chelly but he says if I want to fight him I want to fight him further down the line for bigger titles mm. um, I think he would quite happily look at the Zach Parker fight mm -hmm. not too far in the distant future um, there's always a Daryl Williams fight which has been spoken of, but I don't know what's going on with Daryl now. Mm -hmm. um, there are loads of options out there for Umar, and he wants to move quickly. Okay. So, yeah, it was he all right to have on the show? Brilliant. Really professional, great to deal with, real credit, real credit to the sport. Credit, a, credit to everybody that works with him. He's a good man, isn't he? He is, yeah. So. Really nice guy, I really like him. Um, so, we're going to cut now to an interview with Umar, because that's enough of me talking about him. This was before he fought on Saturday night. Umar Sadiq, boxer, model, technician with a camera now, <laughs> fighting tonight. Daryl Sharp, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Uh, as you can see, still prepping, getting the kit on. And uh, nice boots, huh? You like them? They're right, they're yeah. right then. Have you fought your call before? Yes, I have. Twice. Which? Once as an amateur when I won the English title. And then secondly, on my second fight. Oh, let me see that, double whammy. Secondly, on my second fight, um, Frank Warren show, uh, my box here. And then today will be my third. So, um, so you got wind every time you've been here? Yeah. Fighting yeah. Daryl Sharp tonight? Not that I'm superstitious, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the uh, the pre-fight prep for you? Sitting around with the, uh, the music on? Let's go with the flow, man. Let's go with the flow. Um, you get in, as you can see, shorts on, boots on, wraps are done. Um, ideally, I'll go to the toilet in a bit. <laughs> um, music in the background, have a few snacks, have a few drinks. Um, something I'm drinking, a bit of piss. What's this? What is that? I'm joking. Um, it's just, uh, I've just got some electrolytes in there. All right. um, and then, you know, within a certain time before we expect to be on, um, I'll start getting warm and go in and do the business. And it's your first time um, on one of the Goodwin boxing shows, because you're normally on Frank Warren shows. 
So it's a bit of a change up for you tonight. Frank's happy with it's you coming away. Massive change. Yeah, now Frank's <coughs> happy. They're cool, but but um. Usually I walk in through the back, walk in there, I get to the change room. Today, coming through the front, they've gone, we've got to search you. Now we've got to search your bags, they said. So I'm boxing, I've got the wristband. Yeah, we've still got to search you. All right, cool, put the bags on. And then this guy goes to me, put your arms up. He starts tapping me down, I'm fucking boxing. <laughs> <laughs> I just came on the back, that's yeah. right. But um, yeah, just there's little things that you don't think of when you're boxing on a different right. show, but you know, take it all in my stride. Um, I did I'm in here, and I now understand why they're doing what they're doing, so I'm just looking forward to getting on them. Yeah, you just want to stay active, get the fight exactly. exactly, so whatever it takes, um, I'll let a man tap me down. <laughs> and, um, yeah, just do whatever it takes. I'll fight on any show so long as I'm allowed to um, because I want to stay active. There are things I need to work on. And um, I, I left an accounting job to box full time, so when I'm not boxing, I kind of feel lost. And um, I'm fortunate enough that Frank's allowed me to, you know, box yeah. shows like this. And it's a couple of weeks' notice you've taken this fight as well, isn't it? So yeah. Steve's fit you in. Yeah, so I've, I've just managed to get the permission to box in another show a couple of weeks ago and straight away got on the phone <laughs> to Steve. <laughs> I was like, I see you got a show on in a bit. He's good um, enough to put you on. He's good enough to put me on. Very nice man, it's been a pleasure to work with. It's, like, everything's gone smoothly. Um, very direct, easy people to get hold of and work with and instructions are put up clearly. Um, so it's been smooth and- Good experience. Wanna, yeah, good experience. And I just want to get out of there and you know, do the business and. Um, at the end of it, hopefully we're both benefiting really well from you know me coming on the show. You know, obviously I've mentioned the things, the benefits I get from it, and hopefully um, there's some benefits that Steve can recognise me being on the show. And yeah, I'm yeah. happy. So top boxing, Sadiq going out tonight. Get the Daryl Sharp fight out of the way, and then what's, what's coming next? Um, I believe I'll probably end up boxing in September after tonight, but um, which is why I didn't want to wait. But um, we'll see if there's a way to box a bit sooner, maybe. Um, I don't want to look past Daryl Sharp, it's a bit hard. But as it stands, what I have been told is September for Frank Warren Day. Excellent. But um, yeah. this has gone so smoothly, and especially ideally I win, that I'm happy to just box whenever one day. Yeah, will you come <laughs> okay. back to another one of these shows? Let me finish boxing first and then we'll see. But um, right now, my box is fully on Daryl Sharp. He's been stopped once in 65, so he started off as a prospect. Um, so I think those two things say a lot about him. So I'm taking him serious. Um, I'm never overlooking anyone anyway. But and you're not ruling out looking for the stoppage tonight? No, I never rule it out. I also never go looking for it. But in a little bit, I'm not going to be as relaxed as this because I'm just going to be thinking to hurt someone. Pure fight mode. Yeah, I mean, I don't go in there and like, bang him out, but I do still going there thinking I want to hurt someone. Yeah, when do you switch on? When's like, when's fight mode kicking? Um, I don't know, it kind of just comes in gradually to be fair. Um, it comes in gradually, but by the time, sometimes after I start hitting the pads, sometimes before, other times when I get in the ring and look at the person, it's just, it's different each time, but one thing's for sure, I get in there and I want to hurt people. Right, <laughs> top, man. right, we'll leave you to it and get ready for the fight. Alright, cheers. So, coming back, uh, Daniel Mendes lost 91-99 in the Southern Area Cruiserweight title fight to Nick Parper. Well, it was, um, it was really, Daniel didn't ever get into the fight, Nick didn't let him, uh, Daniel couldn't. Um, it was really a comprehensive win by Nick Parper. I've spoken to Daniel since the fight, I, I've told him to make some changes to things and he will do, he's going to do that. Fact, my advice was to do that, which he's going to do. I think he can come back stronger. Um, as for Nick, it now elevates him into a prime position in the rankings. And uh, I think the best is yet to come from Nick Parper. And I thought Nick performed superbly. Yeah, best performance by a country mile I've seen from Nick. Um, he's evolved his style, his game plan was strong. It was well executed, it was, get those early rounds in and seemingly like take the air out of Mendes' tyres a little bit um, and yeah he just seemed to take the energy away from mm. Mendes which seemed to leave Mendes without much ability to throw back Yeah. Um, and credit to Josh if he's the one who's responsible for getting Parper into that physical shape and that stamina to keep it going all the way through you know, into that 10th round, he got his, not a second win, but, um, you know, he was still energetic enough yeah. to, to keep Mendes from being a threat. I thought he was brilliant. Yeah, so did I. So full credit to him. 
And Daniel, I'm sure we group and come back again. Yeah, yeah, good luck to him. So you've got an interview with Josh now, haven't you? Yeah, there's an interview with Josh Burnham. So I spoke to him Saturday night straight Unsung after hero. the fight. Unsung hero, Josh Burnham, who's done a fantastic job with, uh, with young Nick. Um, but yeah, it's an interview straight after the, the fight on Saturday night where I managed to speak to about his game plan and how it all went from his perspective. Um, so yeah, you'll catch that now. With the winning coach of the evening, Josh Burnham, uh, just taking Nick Parper to the Southern Area Cruiserweight title. How's it feel? Amazing, man. Yeah, first of many. It's my first, my first champion. So uh, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see what the future holds now. Did he box the orders tonight? Yeah, he did. You can't always get it 100% right. I mean, we, we did think Mendes would engage a little bit more, to be honest. Um, but I did say to Nick, um, after the first round, he come back and I said, you know, he's, he's going to do this for a couple of rounds and then he's going to open up. Don't, don't get complacent. Which he did. He did it later than I thought he would. It was about 6-7 that he started to do it. Yeah, he started slowly opening up round by round. But yeah, I, I, I thought by the third round, he'd really start trying to pick Nick off. And in all honesty, I thought he'd run a bit more. Yeah. Which would have made it easier for us, to tell you the truth, so, yeah. He was landing with that rear uppercut, but then not doing anything off the back of it. Were you surprised that he didn't, that um, Mendes was, was landing? I with? think, I think, he, that was the one shot that Nick showed with, was his, his actually his, his uh, lead uppercut, his right uppercut, straight to the middle. But, as you say, he didn't really capitalise on it, and I think he struggled with Nick. Once he felt Nick's power, I mean, at the weigh-in yesterday, he came in five kilos lighter than Nick. On a day today, I think Nick was probably about 94 kilos. So I would have thought he was almost 10 kilos heavier than the guy. Yeah. You know, so I think he struggled with the just the size of Nick, the power of Nick. Yeah, because Nick could manoeuvre him around when they got into holes exactly. and clinches. And Nick could. I, I said to Nick uh, initially, I said, "Keep going downstairs to the body is working." And then when he was doing that, he was getting close, and Mendes just started lifting his head up. I said, "Well, fuck it, two to the body, go straight upstairs." And he did it, and he was landing every time. So again, I think uh, Mendes had in his head how Nick was going to fight and then once he realised that wasn't how he was going to fight he kind of struggled to adjust. Yes, I think probably most people watching were almost surprised by Nick's adaption to the fight. You know, we've had unbelievable sparring for this camp. In our last spar we, we went down to Margate, had a great 10 round spar with a lad down there and um, that proved what I already knew. You know, Nick's fitness has come on leaps and bounds, a technique leaps and bounds and more importantly his self-confidence. He believes in himself now more than ever. And do you think, I mean, that can only be built upon from tonight? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I mean, I think, I think Nick can go and challenge for bigger titles. I think there's a lot of good names out there in the Cruiserweight division. I, mean, I don't want to start calling people out, but I think everyone is there at the right time. If the right belt's on the line, the right money's on the line. How quickly do you want him back out? I, you know, at the right time, he's talking about not having any time off. But he's talking him, about getting back in the gym on Monday. Yeah, I'll give him a week off. He's done two back-to-back -back camps. He did that after the last fight. I'll give him a week off. And then, um, you know, get back in maybe September time, I think. Excellent. Right, thank you very much, Josh, and thank congratulations you. on tonight. Cheers. And we're back for the last fight, uh, and it was the last fight on the night as well, which is quite apt. Um, Curtis Felix. 97-93 points victory over Conor Vian in the English welterweight title eliminator. Oh, Curtis, done, done a great job. We lived with Barry O'Connell for the month before the That's fight, brilliant. didn't he? They lived together in this flat and, uh, you know, it was a different thing. He treated it like a proper camp because, as Barry said, Conor Vian's a power, he's a corporal, he's not going to be wanting for stamina. You need to match it. You've got to match it, so he dragged him down. And uh, it paid off because I think without that he may have struggled because Connor put up a great fight. Curtis was a worthy winner, put up a great fight, and hopefully we can go on to even bigger things with Curtis now. But full credit to Curtis and, and the team at State of Mind who are just fantastic. And uh, just got to wish it. Hopefully we can now guide him on to even bigger things. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was such an exciting fight. And... It was back and forth almost, but it always seemed like Curtis was getting the upper hand on the exchanges. But that was not to say that Connor didn't um, have his own moments. And I was sat right in front of those Connor Vian fans. Yeah. Wow, were they loud? They were brilliant, all of them. Um, but yeah, Curtis was just. He was a slightly more skilled of the two, and I think there was that. 
if you said they were both 10 out of 10 for fitness, I think Curtis was the more skilled of the two boxers. Um, and that's what paid off for him all, really. Yeah. Was, <laughs> were there any points where you thought, stop putting your hand behind your back? <laughs> yeah. How many times did he do it? Three, four? Yeah. Um, just dipped his hand behind his back, yeah. stuck his chin out, invited Connor into him. Um, yeah, and I thought... He's Con- entertaining to watch, isn't he, Curtis? He's absolutely brilliant to watch. I loved watching him. Um, and I've not really seen that much of his career so far. Then. I've missed a fair few of his fights, but I certainly won't few miss one. in Northampton as well. Right? Yeah, I, I won't miss one now, because... He, he's made a brand new not brand new but a, a bigger fan of me um, but yeah just Connor credit to Connor like he just kept coming and coming and coming but he was getting picked off more and more as the fight progressed um, but Curtis was there's something about him yeah um, I think he was disappointed he didn't get the stoppage what, like he wants to start getting his feet planted more yeah. and but it was a good fight now he knows he can do the the 10 rounds again because he did it against Justin Menzi but that was at a slower pace now he can do he's done two 10 round wins now so now he's really he's now got he's 30 years of age he's now got the two 10 rounders and we can now move on will you look to move him towards that English title yeah. immediately yeah 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 we can who's got that at the moment Echo Essaman oh he yeah, has up in Nottingham isn't very he? good fighter yeah is that Nottingham based yeah so when's a mandatory due on that now Oh right, so it could I'd be. imagine he's he's due a, he's due a mandatory equestrian, but whether Curtis gets it or somebody else gets it, who knows? But he's due a mandatory now. That's why we we did an eliminator to see whether that would help to get him towards a mandatory. But you'll does. push for that if yes. you can. Yes, excellent. Um, yeah, because I mean he's now what is he ten and zero, Curtis, yeah. ready uh, to go. Yeah, uh, and we managed to grab a little bit of time with Curtis straight after the fight again. Um, and oh, I feel bad doing this to fighters when you know they have to. I didn't realise this that they have to do the medical straight That's after right. the fight. Straight after the fight, they're stood up against the wall in the chain room with a doctor yeah. flashing the light in there. Then they have to get a bit of paper up and sign off that they've done their med. I've not seen that before yeah. actually. Um, you learned a lot. Yeah, I, did, I honestly did. Right. It was, I was like a sponge trying to take in everything that I could see and, and experience, but. Yeah, to then have me walking around with a camera going, you all right, mate? <laughs> I felt quite bad. He really probably just wants to rehydrate and see his family. And But Josh made me do it, so uh, that's my excuse. <laughs> but here it is, uh, me and Curtis straight after his win on Saturday night. We're here with Curtis Felix after his win, the English title eliminator, well away. How are you feeling? Feeling fantastic, feeling good. And I've got the win time here, yeah. Performance-wise? Uh, my performance, I think, was good. At times, I liked how to scrap a bit, so I kind of gave him a chance. But uh, my performance was there. Camp has been good. Um, thanks to my trainer. He's had me staying with him. He's pretending it's in happening. Pretending he ain't listening, but he's had me staying with him <laughs> through the week. He's been cooking me breakfast, cooking me uh, you stayed in his house, didn't you? He's got a flat, so I stayed there. There's no TV. <laughs> There's no heating. <laughs> no sugar. No sugar. No sugar. Yeah, no, he just he took care of me. The devil. We were programmed to say. Uh, he's taking care of me, and I think that showed today. Um, you kept that energy going through 10 rounds. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I'll put that one down to Barry and just, you know, getting me up at five in the morning and, and putting the work in. So, thank you, Barry, thank you. Well, that's a massive win. You said earlier about you, um, you sometimes get into a scrap too often. Yeah, uh, I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> full of testosterone, full of steam. There um, were times you could have made that fight easier for yourself, I but think, I think yeah. you chose not to at times. <laughs> Because I've only got one stoppage on my record, every time I'm in my head, I'm like, I want to stop. Someone. And you've got someone coming out to fight you tonight. Exactly. So I'm trying to put the power in and hold my feet and whatnot, and that's giving him a chance because that's his game. So yeah. that's the only time it levelled up really. And there's plenty of showboating. Many times with your hands on the back. My, my dad, people say showboating. My dad always says when you're boxing, you express yourself. So it's just me expressing myself. It's not me trying to. You know, trying to wind him I'm up. I'm not trying to be arrogant. It's just I'm just having fun. That's what it's about. Yeah, and it was a brilliant defensive display as well. There were many times that you just you weren't there when he threw three, four, five shots. Yeah, um, I think because he's rushing, he's showing the Russian football. You know, I can see them. I can see the shots, so it's easy for me to move out of the way. And that's a hell of a noise in there as well. Your fans and his. 
There was, yeah, there's loads of noise. When his fans were going, my fans started going. When my fans started going, his fans were going. Yeah. It's good, it's good. Did you notice that in the ring? Of course. <laughs> As so now it's on to the English title, uh, perhaps. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Sure. Well, you want a few weeks off or uh, um, back with Barry Monday? It'd be nice, to be honest, yeah, it would be nice. Listen, I've had, this year, I've had three fights, not a lot, but I've had two back to back camps, I had a little break, and then I was staying in Barry's house. Being away from my family, not working, uh, it's, it takes it out of you. So I would like, I'm not going to have time off, but it would be nice to just. Just have you know a couple of weeks just to reevaluate and and then make my next move. Make it's great to have all your team as well and your brother as well. My Winning team, both getting the W tonight. <laughs> Loving it. Excellent. <laughs> thank you very much, Chris. Thank Congratulations, you. Thank Mike. You. Good Can I just say thank you to my uh, literally my sponsors, um, Oakwood Scaffold in there. We've got Eight Barrels Club and we've got Cloud Nine Spa. If they weren't supporting me today, would have been uh, it wouldn't have been possible. Um, Perfect. So thank you. Go and rehydrate. Thank you very much, Kurt. Right. So yeah, that's the. Uh, uh, the winner uh, of what was the last fight of the evening uh, and the last fight we're going to review. So we're going to move on now. Uh, we've got interviews coming up with Nick Parker. We've got interviews with Mark Butler and his trainer. We've got the Q&A session. Um, but remember to check out all the videos of the full fights over on YouTube because, you know, why we record them if not, I suppose. Um, <laughs> But yeah, they're there, check them out, enjoy them, uh, and give feedback as to, to what you like or what you don't like. Uh, and then they'll be coming up with commentary over the next, yep. uh, you know, as the season starts again in September. Yeah. Right, cool. So we'll head on now to the interviews. Welcome to the new Southern Area Cruiserweight Champion, Nick Parker. How you doing? I'm good, bro. You alright? <laughs> I'm alright. <laughs> that, that belt, you just said it hasn't left your side since Saturday. No, it hasn't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just admiring it. It's got names back yeah. on the, uh, back to 1989 yeah. on that. Um, so yeah, won the belt Saturday night against Daniel Mendes in a 10 round points win, uh, which you dominated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Yeah, yeah, really good. Not going back to the gym yet? I did actually. I went back on Monday morning and I got told off by my coach. <laughs> I just heard Josh on the phone give you a telling off if you went today. Yeah, yeah. I'm tempted, but. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk through Saturday night then. So, yeah. from talking with various people before the fight, I think the general view was either it was going to be a Daniel Mendes points victory yeah. or Nick Parper stoppage. Yeah. And it ended up being a Nick Parper points victory. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. does that surprise you that it went that way? Um, it doesn't surprise me because I, I you know, I was, I was conf confident in my abilities. I know, I know I can box. I just haven't had the opportunity to show it. So I think in this fight, I actually showed people I can box. Yeah. I know I can hit, but I need to. I need to know what I can do the rounds and I can box. Yeah. So I think I showed it. Yeah. Was it a conscious effort to go out there and get a few rounds in the bank at the beginning of the fight and get yourself ahead? Um, yeah. I mean, I just wanted to set the pace. I wanted to set, you know. I wanted to apply pressure early to let him know I'm there. I think um, I think I done more than I needed to do yeah. in the earlier rounds. I think I could have held back a little bit more. Um, he was a bit more reserved in the early rounds, but you know it's just once you get carried away sometimes. So I just let my hands go a bit too much. But you learn from these things. Do you think? Because for those that were there Saturday night, and now the footage is going to be put onto YouTube, people yeah. can see the performance. It was such a good performance. Thank you so much. Um, do you think your early pace that you took the fight out at mm -hmm. took some of the wind out of Mendes? Because I was almost sat there thinking by around four, five, six, Mendes would start to up the pace himself yeah. because he wasn't throwing an awful lot in that, yeah. those early stages. Yeah. Um, do you think you managed to take the, the energy out of him by just attacking early on? I think so. I mean, look, I can tell you from experience, you do, you know, when you're dishing out punches, you can sap your energy, but I think you're going to get more, you can sap, your energy will be more sap by receiving punches yeah. rather than giving them. And, and obviously I was, I was dishing out a lot, but I think Mendes was taking a lot more. So that can again sap your energy, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Were you looking for the stoppage at any point? Because come round nine, I'd said to Linus Shadofi, I said yeah. it, it looks like Nick could get him out of it yeah. with like half the round left. Mm -hmm. um, were you consciously doing that or? Um, I'll be honest, I wasn't really looking for the stoppage in this fight. I just, I, I actually wanted it to go the distance. I said it to a few people and they said, no, don't let it go the distance. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'll be honest, I wanted it to go the distance because I wanted people to see that I can box and I wanted to prove to myself I can do the rounds. Um, so I was just trying to relax and if the stoppage comes, it comes. 
But um, you know, there was there was points where I thought I could maybe get him out, but I didn't want to. You know, there's a fine line; you don't want to gas out. Yeah. So it's just all about intelligence at the end of the day. And it was an intelligent performance. I think I'd said to you on the night that um, your style under your coach Josh Burnham yeah. has evolved so much from what it was kind of last saw your debut. You. It's evolved so much yeah. from that. Yeah. And it's more intelligent. There were so many times when mm. I thought you're going to rush in there. Yeah. And you took a step back, yeah. and you let Daniel then yeah. back himself into yeah. a corner, yeah. and then you went in. Yeah. Um, and it was such a, a cleverly worked yeah. game plan that was different to what I anticipated. Thank you. Yeah, I think a lot of people didn't expect that. I think, like you said, I think they expected Daniel to, um, you know, catch me coming in because there's been times in the past where I've steamed in like, yeah. a, like a train. I've learned. From, <laughs> I've learned from that. And that it's not all about going forward. It doesn't. It doesn't harm you taking a step back. It's intelligence, making people fall short. So I just wanted to prove to people as well that I can outbox someone who's expected to outbox me yeah. and outthink them and out, you know, outsmart them. And I think that did outthink. And I think it upset his rhythm. The times yeah. that you took that step yeah, back, yeah. he was probably anticipating you coming in. He'd sure. step into the ropes, yeah. ready to, yeah. to catch you on the way yeah, in. Yeah. But there was nothing to catch. It was um, I mean, look, when we um, when we had the way in. Like Daniel's a gentleman, he's a really nice guy. Yeah. Full respect to him. But he did say when he made his prediction, he said that Nick Papa has never fought an athlete like myself. And I could say the same to him. You know, he's never fought anyone like me. But I wanted to prove to him that I'm also an athlete, and I also can adapt as well. Yeah. And it's no discredit to Daniel at all because no, he, no, yeah, not. he fought well over ten, ten yeah. rounds. He yeah. couldn't get the shots off. No, yeah. But there was that. Uh, rear uppercut that caught you a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The times that he did catch you coming yeah, in. Yeah, he's got a good uppercut. Yeah, yeah. was that an effect? Did you, like, did you feel all those? Um, yeah, I mean, look, anyone over this over this um, cruiserweight limit at this kind of weight, any man can hit. Yeah. Whether the record suggests it on paper or not, if you're over 14 stone, you can hit. And I've always, I respect any opponent I put in the room with. So, yeah, I mean, it was significant enough for me to wake up and not take it, not want to take it. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you did. Yeah, you yeah. think about three of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's but you took them well. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I mean, yeah, it's one of them things. Look, they say if you're going to get in the shower, you're going to get wet. It's like boxing. Yeah. You're going to get in the ring, you're going to take a punch. Yeah. I mean, if we rewind your career, like yeah. talking of taking a punch, there was that fight where you got stopped. Yeah. And we're going back yeah. two years? Um, it's been a couple of years, yeah. Which was a hard knockout, wasn't it? It yeah. was. Yeah. I, I yeah. don't know if you've ever watched it again. Oh, or, yeah, I watched it. Yeah, I watched which, it. I mean, that was hard to watch at the time. Yeah. And there were many boxers that probably would never have come back and fought again after that. Yeah. And like your mental fortitude to come back from that stoppage, mm -hmm. and you know you've not lost again since, and yeah. you've gone on and won that title. So yeah. I think it's so impressive that Thank you've been you so able much. to do that. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. I mean, you know, it was a very hard loss to take. Obviously, I take this very seriously. It's my, you know, boxing is my career. It's my life. Yeah. I live it, I breathe it. So I didn't just, br you know, it wasn't easily brushed off. I really, I was, I was kind of depressed for a while. But I had to just look, pick myself back up and say, Nick, you're going to rebuild yourself and then get back on the right track. And then, yeah. And it was a one-off punch, wasn't it? It wasn't like you were getting out boxing a fight. No. You got caught when the guy bounced off the rope, didn't oh, he? Honestly, I was, I was so comfortable in that fight. Yeah. I, was, I was ahead. It was, you know, while it lasted, it was two rounds. I was ahead both rounds. I felt very comfortable. In fact, I had him hurt. I don't know if you remember, I had yeah. him hurt a couple of times. No, I, I, I nearly had him out of there. And it was at that point where I kind of, from an experience, I rushed in to finish him off like a wild train, like I said a yeah. minute ago. And I got caught on the way in, which obviously doubles up the impact. And that's why I was such yeah. a hard, you know, it was a hard. But that kind of experience is probably what led you on Saturday night to yeah. be able to yeah. mentally recall, right, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, go yeah, again. Yeah, you, you know, regroup. You, it's like you, you, um, you win, you lose, or you learn. Like, so I, I didn't lose that fight. I learned from it. Yeah. So you know, don't make the mistakes again. Yeah. Or try not and try not to make the mistakes. Yeah. And that uh, I was backstage with you, kind of before and after the fight. That energy around your your changing room was brilliant. See, you had your nan and granddad in the, yeah, the changing yeah, room yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. That had, yeah. Bless them, I saw Andy Brown kind of help them back. Yeah, they were both on crutches, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. So, never missed the fight. Yeah, they were brilliant. But that energy around the ring as well, yeah. like you've got a hell of a following. Like yeah. anyone that's watching this that was there Saturday night, credit to you because yeah. they were making some serious noise yeah. out there. Yeah, they, you know, I'm really grateful to have such good people. You know, like. 
um, supporting me through my career. And they know how much it means to me, and obviously they, you know, they really get behind me. And it does does help you, you know, when you hear their their chair in the ring, it uplifts you. Yeah, it pushes you through. Does it push you to go out and fight in the 10th round when you didn't have to go out and fight in the 10th round? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, yeah, that is just down to like, um, composure. Like, you can get carried away from the crowd's chair yeah. to go out there, but again, like I said, it's all about when the level's got, you have to compose yourself because you can get complacent sometimes, get carried away. It all takes you one punch at this weight, so yeah. it's about being composed at all times. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I know we can't go into too much detail about what's next for you. I know you've had the conversation with yeah, Steve. Yeah. Um, yeah. But look, you're now, what are you, six? Six from the country, yeah. On Box yeah, Rec. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a bright future. We won't go into yeah, you, to yeah. where you're aiming now, yeah, but that's such a bright future. A young man, you so you've got a good coach in Josh Burnham there. Yeah. You've had a good schooling over the years, yeah. you know, going back to your days with Don Charles, yeah, and, yeah. and now Josh has kind of taken it to that next mm -hmm. level. It's, it's such a bright future. So that's, uh, like, uh, where do you, uh, in a year's time, do you want to um, kind of be around the English level, the British level, or just an open door at the moment? I'll be honest. I want to progress as fast as possible because I know I know I'm not I'm not old in terms of age, but I don't want to sit around too long either because I want to know how good I am. I want to test myself. And yeah. Again, with this fight, I took this fight. You know, Daniel's a worthy champion, so I said to Steve, I want to test myself, see how good I am. I don't want to play games anymore. I want to find out if I'm good enough to go to that next level. And yeah. To answer your question, in a year's time, I see myself at minimum British level, if not quicker than that. Um, I want to, you know, I want a world title. I want to, I want to go all the way. I'm not in it to, to go to a certain level. I want to either go all the way or pack in. Yeah. But I'm not gonna. I'm not ready to pack in. Yeah. I'm so you want to find out what the ceiling is. Yeah. If the ceiling is the very top, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And if you find your way 100%. along that route, then yeah. then cool. Hundred percent. Excellent. Have you got any sponsors, Nick, that are out there that yeah. you know have helped you along your career? Because I know they help boxers so yeah, much. Yeah, I've got I've got quite a few actually. Um, Give them all a mention. Go on then. Let's start from the top. So we've got. Um, Star States and Lettings, um, who's cost the spirit, I want to say thank you very much to you for backing me and your support throughout the years. Um, we've got Lantern Recovery on board now, Mr. Ray Coleman, thank you as they're well. They're great for boxers, man, yeah. Ray Recovery. They help a lot of boxers yeah, over yeah, the years. Ray loves boxing. Fair play yeah, to Ray. Ray loves boxing. Um, we've got G7 Cloud, who's my friend George, who's got a web hosting company, he's just got on board. He's a really, you know, thank you to you as well. Um, we've got Brunswick Garage, who's a garage, obviously a local one. Nick, who owns it, thank you so much as well. Um, and my other sponsors, um, Gentleman's Barber, who's my friend Andres, been cutting my hair for years. You so, saw your beard out pre-fight. Yeah, it gives me that Spartan look. <laughs> 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 um, who else have we got? We've got, um, we've got Kappa Medica, Joe, who's been my osteo for this camp. It's really helped me out a lot. Um, and I met him through Total Boxer, who's the brothers that I'm training at yep. currently. Um, who Matt Garcia owns it. Thank you, Matt, for having us at your gym. Um, and who else am I missing? I've pretty much said a lot. Well, you can find him on Nick's social media. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. he uh, he'll happily f yeah. provide some links to the, yeah, uh, the yeah. people that support him. Yeah. Before we go though, I wanted to show people because I don't think people realise this. You get the belt in a suitcase. Yeah, you get yeah, yeah. cruiserweight. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact. Like it's such a, an old school yeah, way of doing it. But yeah. They give you that on the night, like give, to take home. Yeah, they give you it on the night. So um, obviously I've got this belt now. It's uh, 30 years old, as you can tell. Yeah. It's a classic, it's a vintage. It's got some names on there as well. Yeah, it's got some really old names. The first one is in 89, 16, or the second 89, Louis Jen. So yeah, it's got a lot of history, this belt. I'm hoping my name will go on there. Um, yeah, but so I've got to keep it for two weeks and then I have to return it, it goes into the, the safe. Oh, uh, okay. In the Vatican City. <laughs> <laughs> so for the next two weeks, if anyone sees, yeah. uh, sees Nick, he's likely to yeah. have it adorned oh, yeah. somewhere. Yeah, it'll be on me. Have you actually worn it, like, yeah, like yeah. a wrestling belt? Oh, yeah, I wore it. I wore it um, actually after I won it on the night, I went out, so I put it around my waist as a real belt. Yes. And I just put my leather jacket over it. I've got a picture <laughs> of that. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. Yeah. Excellent. Well, congratulations again, Nick. It's so such much. a good performance Thank Saturday night. Thank and it's a bright much. future. Appreciate it. Um, and yeah, keep an eye out for this man because there is a bright future ahead. Thank you so much. Right, with us now, we've got Mark Butler, undefeated lightweight and trainer. How are we doing? Yeah, very good. good. Thank you. Excellent. So, thank you for coming up today and uh, being with us. 
So, you haven't done many interviews, have you, in front of a camera? Did I no, ask Steve say? No, not, not many, no. <laughs> so, you're not comfortable with it? We'll no, be alright. Yeah, it'll be fine. Be fine. Good looking lad, you'll be fine. Um, so, let's talk about your career so far. Two fights, one knockout, one point win. Yeah. How's it gone for you? Like, are you happy with the progress from kind of debut to now? Yeah, yeah I'd say so, yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah I'd say so. Yeah. Um, as a trainer, has he performed as you'd want him to perform so far? He's come together really well, actually. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's gone from, uh, as an amateur, quite a scrappy come forward fighter. He'd, he'd have a go at anything. Yeah, but um, as he's moved on a bit, he's got the fences come together nicely. And, yeah, basically, but he's, he's placing his shots, sitting down, and his shots a bit better now. So, yeah. Did you have him as an amateur? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So, has that been? Because not a lot of boxers do that, do they? Take their amateur coach through to the pros. Um, do you think it's been beneficial having that relationship? You know his flaws and his strengths already. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're from down Brighton, so you know there's not a huge amount of professional stuff going on down there. Yeah. You know, you, you, there's, there's a couple of places down there, but it's not really, it's not, it's not as big as it is in London. Um, you know, we, we see Mark pops up and uh, trains with Zed Miller and, and the boys at IQ. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, it's a bit of a bond. He works, I work, so it's, it's, it's difficult to get that, that thing going on where he can up, be up in London all the time to get his career going. So, it's, yeah, it's working out all right. Yeah. Were you born and raised in Brighton, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, as you said, there's not an awful lot of boxing historically kind of down that way. How did you end up in it? I, d I wanted to do boxing for ages, but my mum never let me do it. <laughs> so uh, as soon as I turned 19, I get, went, went down the gym. Did you have to do it when she wasn't in, like sneak out the ass? <laughs> no, no. I told her in the end, but then, yeah, she's the biggest fan now, so yeah. Does she come she, to your fights? Yeah, she does now. Yeah, so what's she like? Because I've seen various mums of like, some will be there with a handbag screaming their lad on, and some won't watch the fight but want to be there. Yeah, she sort of don't watch it, but yeah, she wants to be there. Yeah. yeah. So how um, how have you found it turning pro from your amateur days? Yeah, yeah I found it good. I, f I feel like the, all the stuff we're working on's come come together well now. Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. What's the major differences? What's the uh, what's the things that you've kind of picked up on that you do now that you never did kind of back then? I don't know, but mainly my defence has got a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 don't, don't get it as much, so that's a bit better. You say he was a scrappy amateur. Yeah, I mean, but in all fairness, he used to leave, like, he used to leave with his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his you know, best defence. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, but, yeah he's, he's moving on well with that now. He's taking his time more. Uh, he's said he's, look, he's looking at he's looking to place the shot rather than just hit the thing that's moving in front of him. Yeah. So yeah, you know, basically he's moved from a, an amateur to a professional. He, he, he seems to take it take it quite naturally. Yeah. And lightweight's quite a, um, a historic division, and it's been quite a good division around the southern area. But at the moment, there aren't that many many names floating about, are there? For uh, for kind of if we look kind of twelve months ahead, where you might be looking at titles. Uh. Is there anyone that you've kind of got your eye on already at this stage of your career? No, not really, no. But just focusing on building? Yeah, just, just focusing on me, really. Yeah. Yeah, what I'm doing. When do, you think, uh, when do you think Mark will be ready to look at titles? Well, he's, uh, you know, I'd say 26, getting a bit of, a bit of an old man now, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, well, we, 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 we'll be looking to sort of um, start pushing him on after sort of six, seven fights. Right, so you'd be and, looking uh, 18 months or so, maybe? Top end, yeah. 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 We wouldn't get moving as, as soon as we can, so... Yeah. Um, and then, would you like to try and get boxing back to Brighton in some way? Um, I don't know who else is from Brighton professionally, if I'm honest. Oh, it's but it's got a Oh, well, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> Chris, you've got Scott Welsh down there, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty big names. Yeah, yeah, but Welsh, I think, he struggled to, uh, to do 12 rounds now, bless him. But, yeah, well, it's just, but, yeah, but I mean, if there was the opportunity to get something down in Brighton way, would that be something that you'd look to uh, to maybe do in time? Well, obviously, it's, it's always interesting to, you know, the, 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 you don't say never to anything, do you? But, you know, say at the moment, so we're still running the, I'm still running the amateur club. You yeah. Know, might still be part of that, comes on the opposite with the youngsters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They look up to him, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> You're the old man there now yeah, as well. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you enjoy that side of it, helping out the, the kind of next generation coming through? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's uh, good. Yeah, um, and in terms of the relationship with Steve, coming from Brighton and Steve being kind of late and buzzard based, how did that come about that you uh, you ended up with Steve? 
not been much with um, Zev Miller at IKEA for quite a long time, so you know he's, we, we, we spoke about this. I mean, that's that's how I ended up sort of getting my pro license. He's, you know, oh, okay. We, 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 I was talking to him saying, well, you know, when Mark goes over, we, we, we're probably going to sort of bring him up to you and look after him. He would stuff that. He said, get yourself a license, <laughs> look after him yourself. <laughs> he's a good man, Zev. He's really. fantastic, really, yeah. But so uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of how you know, that sort of uh, moved on. But so uh, yeah, so. Uh, I'm just going to have a look, see where we're going. Yeah. Uh, push it on from here. So you're often up there then, kind of with K Prosper and Yusuf Kamara in the like sparring? Yeah, yeah, well, with, uh, with Yusuf on there quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, quite a bit. Do you feel that brings you on quite a lot? Because they're kind of uh, on the whole, I don't know, maybe six to ten fights ahead of where you are as a pro. Uh, is it useful to have that kind of that experience to pull you along as a Yeah, player? yeah, I'd say so, definitely, yeah. Yeah, they're all good lads there. And, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and so when are you due out next? Do you know? Yeah, September seventh at your club. Oh, uh, okay. So that's the next show that, uh, that Steve's putting on. Yeah. Is that going to be a four rounder again? Yeah, four rounds. Yeah. Um, probably out by more than go to six. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so as a coach, kind of in his third fight, what are you looking for, like? What are the progress routes that you're looking for him to, to take in this one? Pro- progress route for the next one, basically, will be it'll be what he's been doing. Come, he's, he's always going to be a front foot fighter. He's always going to come forward. He's always excited. Yeah, to be fair, he's yeah. an exciting lad to watch. Yeah, so it's just going to be a little bit more accuracy, you know, and just getting the head movement a little bit better, sharper. You know, the last fight was fantastic. He didn't get caught much, didn't get hit much, which is, you know, I say it's all moving forward. Yeah, you know, but it's a it's a better level, so it's a faster pace. Yeah. If anyone has never seen you fight, how would you describe your own style? Um, pretty aggressive, come forward. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just that's it, really. Just fast paced. Yeah, very fast paced, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. And what's your kind of biggest strength as a fighter? Do you think? Um, I don't know. Just I don't know. Power, speed, work rate. Just the the, will, the willingness. To keep Will- going. Oh, like that. Heart. Yeah, yeah heart. Keep going for it. <laughs> I love it as a coach of thinking, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't rely on that. Get your head deal. <laughs> Are there any sponsors, Mark, you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, yeah. Um, you got the golf one, I remember the yeah, golf yeah, one. Yeah, Gray's um, Golf and Affiliation. Yeah. I think that's what it is. And um, uh, Richard Evans Constructions. Richard Evans Constructions. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's it. All right, lovely. So if you need anything, if those people can help you out, Richard Evans Construction, if he can help you out, uh, make sure you look him up. But yeah, no. so you'll see Mark in September at York Hall. Um, and yeah, for those that haven't seen him, what you'll see is someone that's fast, energetic, powerful, aggressive, and blocks with his face. Yeah, is everything yeah. you want to see? Yeah, <laughs> Unless you man over there. Yeah, <laughs> Excellent. So we'll see you in September. We wish you all the best. Right, we're back for the Q&A session. Um, now we've got Steve and Southern Area Champion Nick Pop. I'm going to keep uh, referring to you in your full title. Like a lordship now. Um, I've, I've left my belt upstairs. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the first time he's left your side, isn't it? Since Saturday. <laughs> Um, so before I do that, I'm going to give a shout out to some sponsors that uh, Xavier Miller sent over this week um, because I always ask people for sponsors and Xavier's the only one who ever sends them to me, so good on him. Uh, Dennis Wahomey, sponsored by CHI's Juicy Kicks. Uh, I don't know what that is, if I'm perfectly honest, but I've heard of the best of what they do. Um, courtesy of Xavier use of Kamari sponsored by Tiger Bay and Ealing Boards and Timber so if you need anything from Ealing Boards and Timber Tiger Bay is a restaurant isn't it restaurant and shisha bar is it right so get yourself down there if you need anything to do with that if you're hungry if you fancy some shisha get there if you need Boards and Timber go to Ealing Boards and Timber and IQ Boxing as a gym uh, you ever been there yeah 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 Really good gym, yeah. It is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So that's at my uh, seconds license yeah. there, because they've got the amateur side. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, IQ Boxing, sponsored by Bravos, Tiger Bay, once again, Ealing Boards and Timber, Your London Legacy, and KMT Apparel. Do they make the IQ Boxing kit? kit yeah. That's a nice kit, that. I like this. Isn't it? Yeah. I need to speak with Xavier about that, I'll get some. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's all the sponsors for this week, so thank you very much to Xavier for sending them through. 
Uh, we're going to come on to the questions, some of which are for you, Nick, some of you, Steve, and some we'll just throw them around. Um, so, we'll start off with thoughts on a potential clash between Richard Comey and Teofimo Lopez from Chris Glover out in New York. How are you doing, Chris? Hope you're well. What do you reckon? Richard Comey, Teofimo Lopez. Okay, well, I, I'm really close friends with Mickey, which yep. is manager. Have you spoken to Mickey about this fight? Yeah. What was your advice? I think I think Teofimo Lopez is better than Mickey thinks he is. Right. Okay. Okay. That speaks volumes without saying so it. So I think um, yeah. So I Josh said that Josh's opinion was he said the best fight he's ever seen in his whole life live is Teofimo Lopez. Well, that was the one where he smashed that lad on the Kovalev undercard, wasn't yeah. it? And but Josh, I mean, I I think he is. Look, he's either one or two things. He's either the next coming or he's a hype job yeah there's no in between he's either a hype job or the second coming and one thing is for sure that you're going to know after he fights Richard do you understand like because Richard will fight anyone I've no doubt whatsoever do you understand from that fighter's mentality if you're Richard Comey mm -hmm. what would your mentality be I want to is it I want to be the one to go in there and prove that he's a hype job and I'm levels above what he's achieved and what he's going to achieve yeah, I would say so. I mean, I would, I would just want to show how good I am as well. Yeah, so, yeah and you want that hype that's currently with Lopez to, to transfer over. Yeah, yeah. Use his name as well to, you know, boost you up as well. I mean, beating Lopez, I mean, obviously the winner's going to fight Lomachenko, that's the plan. So beating Lopez will put him in a really big, strong financial position to fight Lomachenko. Um, I'm not really sure why he needed Lopez first. I actually, a, but I understand that you're under contract, and I, I'm just not sure about the fight. I, I so want Richard to win, but I think Lopez is special, so I think it's a really hard fight. I actually think it's almost a no-win for Richard Comey because if you beat Teofimo Lopez, he was a hype job. If you lose to Teofimo Lopez, you're not a world champion anymore. Like <laughs> there's no upside particularly. I don't. I, don't I actually. I actually am not a fan of that fight. Yeah, and I'm being honest. I'm not a fan of that fight. But um, I hope Richard wins. I think Richard is a quality fighter and he's a deserved world champion. Um, Agree. And I do. But do you I think it will happen? Yeah. Yeah. And um, you going for it if it does? I'm going to go over to watch it. Yeah, I'm going to go over to support Richard. I'll go to America to watch it, provided um, it doesn't clash with anything that we're doing. But I'll definitely go to to support him, and I hope he wins. But it's it, it's a tough. It's a hope they make. I hope, hope I hope they've made the right call, and nobody will know until to the bell rings. Until the bell rings. Yeah. Have you watched Roger Lopez? Um, I've seen bits and bobs of him. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good fighter. What do you make of his? Flashy, because I know that's not your way of being yeah, in life, yeah. but that flashy kind of cocky arrogance. I mean, if it works for you, works for you. Some people use that as, I mean, I don't know if it's genuine. Some people put it on for the cameras, but. Yeah. I was told it's genuine. I was told in the hotel when he was staying with Richard Comey, when they both fought on the undercard in yeah. Dallas, people were telling me that he was a horrible little shit. Really? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like him really? which maybe you know <laughs> how many elite level boxers have been really really nice people yeah. Yeah. very few I guess yeah. Richard Comey is no I agree Richard uh, Richard is if he beats Lopez then he's elite yeah yeah yeah. Um, right let's move on Edward Muscat happy birthday Edward because I believe it's your birthday today um, Ed the Shed the man that you'll see around ringside working corners doing anything that's asked for him really he's, he's a good, good man he's a good man no he's a good man works really hard um, so Ed has message saying congratulations to Nick Parper thank you will he be defending against Mark Little in September would be a cracker now Mark has earned his shot the right Should to be able to ask Shall I say um, Mark has earned his shot but he doesn't they don't want um, Paul doesn't want the fight at this stage Paul is trained Paul want Cook it. so the fight um, could be made um, I mean to be honest Nick asked for that fight ok um, and Mark's really, you've got to remember though, from Mark's perspective, Nick had a very big amateur. Yeah. Really, he was a good amateur. So Nick's had all the amateur experience and the pros. Mark had no amateur experience. Yeah. 
So Paul wants him to have more experience, which is fair, which I don't disagree with, and, and um, I think it's the right. I think it's the right decision at this stage. Um, but nobody's saying Mark hasn't earned his right. He has earned his right. But the smart thing from Paul's position um, is that he will give me the go ahead to make a title fight for him when we're ready. And I'd, I'd imagine it'll be in a couple of fights' time. All right, but I so, but I just it isn't the fact that he's being deprived of shot. Yeah. So did you pick Mark as someone you'd want a defence against? Yeah, I mean, look, I'll, I'll, yeah, I've got no problem fighting him. If he wants, you know, if he wanted the fight, I'll, I'm, I'm more than happy. As long as Steve says it, the right fight at the right time, because everything is time now in the day. So yeah, Steve gave it the go ahead. I would say yeah, let's get it on. I mean, just say yeah to anyone. Um, <laughs> every, <laughs> within within really, I'm not saying who's sick for some of their areas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, every fight does say I'll fight anyone, anywhere, but it's, that's not the case with boxing. It's, it's, it's a structure. You've got to be on the right path, the right fight, the right time, and the right management to get there. And I'm in, and I'm in agreement with Paul Cook that I don't think Mark is just ready for Nick Parper just yet. Yeah. And by the time he's ready, Nick will have moved on. Yeah. So I think it's the right decision, but I don't want be, Mark isn't Mark isn't scared of fighting anybody because you know he'll fight anybody. I know Mark. But the point, the point is... He has a limited, very limited experience before he's turned pro. He's learning the professional route as he goes. Yeah. And therefore, you've got to be sensible. And it's about delivering him a title fight at the right time for him. How many amateurs do you have? I believe I had about, not a lot, maybe 30. That's still a reasonable amount, though, isn't it? It's a reasonable amount, yeah. yeah. Over time as well. We always, like... A big hench, uh, stocky dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I fought sometimes as a super heavyweight a couple of times. Oh, right. I, was, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have been. But <laughs> <laughs> Did you eat your way up there? Uh, yeah. No, I've always been in shape since I was like boxing. I was always a big kid at school. Yeah. But when I got into boxing, I like fourteen, fifteen. I then I shed a lot of weight. I got. I really changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. It really did. Excellent. Yeah. Um, right, Daniel Smith on Twitter. ITV and DAZN didn't try anything new with the production of their televised shows, unlike the World Boxing Super Series, who did try with the lighting and the podiums. What does each of you think would be a good change to the production of a televised show, and what is the one thing you hate slash would get rid of? Interest. So what would be the improvement? Well, I'll tell you, um, I actually thought World Boxing Super Series was pretty much, the presentation was as good as it gets. Mm. I don't think you can improve upon that. I think what you get rid of are these crappy international contests with these Mexicans and Argentinians <laughs> and masquerading them as really competitive fights. They should all go. Yeah. Is that crap? And replace them with like that next gen card that's been announced today, where the majority of the fights on that are reasonable, decent fights. I'm happy with that. Like the next gen cards where you're just putting on well, there's one that isn't, but I will pass on that one. There's one that's <laughs> gonna be um, We'll pass on that one. Yeah, but the most of the fights are. And I think that um, I think that's what you want. I think I'm just fed up with watching these one to fifties against against these fighters that've got padded records in their home in their yeah. home gardens or their gyms, and, and they come over and fight for an international title. And it's just garbage to watch. And credit, by the way, to BT Sport and Frank Warren this weekend with Dubois Gorman as their headline fight um, and Joyce Jennings as their kind of support fight. They're brilliant fights. No, they've done. It's a really um, good show. It's for non pay per view. I think, it's, I think it's a really brilliant card. But I remember saying that I thought that I said I thought that both July cards would be. I said about May. I said I thought they'd come out and do really well. But I think it's come out that the stronger card is this weekend. The stronger card is the free to air. Uh, yeah. It's still, you know, you've got to pay for BT, sure. but. Um, but that's a cracking card. Like as a boxing fan, I don't really care what's underneath those two fights either. Like they can give me whatever well, on the card. Florian Marco on there. So no, 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 I know you. <laughs> I know you're bothered. Um, but you know, like as a viewer, whatever you want to give me under that, I'm not really that bothered because of that main event, the two main events. No, I'm, I'm I totally agree. And there's some other fights on there that are good as well. I think it's a really good card. Yeah, it's a really good card. And I think, and, and I think. There's some good fights on the White Reavers card the week after, which we talk about next week. But I th you know, we just want to see competitive fights. We don't want to see all these one to one hundreds and one to fifties. And that's what that's the only thing you can change because I don't think you can improve on the presentation of the WBSS. So if you could get the presentation of that with really competitive fights, yeah, not things being masqueraded as WBA international rubbish with with with, with fighters that got no chance in it. 
That's what we need. Which, to be do. fair, on the whole, that is what the WBSS is. Yeah. Competitive fights, decent presentation. It's just, it's a shame they seem to, the wheels fall off it every time they get going. But yeah. uh, what would be the one thing you'd change? Do you watch a lot of boxing? Um, yeah, I do. I do. I, I, obviously, I follow my own division a lot. Yeah. But I do like to watch. If there's a good card, I'd sit there and watch it. Yeah. What would be the thing you'd change? About the, the BBSS? Well, anything. Anything boxing related. Um, I don't know. I mean... Get, get your name on a certain area belt. Yeah. How do we go about doing yeah, that? Yeah, we were yeah, querying yeah, this we're earlier. We were talking about that. Really. It seems like all the names stopped at 2016. Yeah, yeah I think um, Waddy's name was the last one on the belt. Yeah, but he's had it about 17 times, isn't it? Yeah, so he's, he is, yeah. He's got his own belt, I reckon. <laughs> at home. That's why it's stopped. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think. I'd, I want to see a revamp of the present. Uh, of the commentators. Oh, do you? That would be my choice, is. I'm fed up of seeing the same comment. The commentators to me on boxing are like, you know, the football managers like Mark Hughes, Steve Bruce, that just keep getting recycled. Like they do a, a crap job somewhere, then they just turn up somewhere else. Yeah. And I think I don't know why anyone's employed Mark Hughes to go and do that. I, I don't understand why anyone employs the same commentators. And just rotates. I can't believe why Ian, Dar Ian Dark isn't out there still doing this. Oh, I right. think he's great. Do you don't. Do you BT like should him? bring him back. Do you like him? Yeah. Now, being Dark is class above all the rest of them out there. Agree. Just levels above. Or Mike Costello. Someone get him yeah. off of Radio Five and bring him into the TV. You know they are levels above what we're seeing. Yeah. Agree. Um, that'd be my change. Right. Moving on. Um, <laughs> right. Max Stoke on Twitter. Ever since Joshua got taken out last month, have you noticed how much Sky are pushing Dillian White now? Before, they didn't really seem to care that much. Has anyone noticed? No. No. I actually think they're under pushing him, given he's got a pay-per-view coming I don't, up. I don't, I, don't, I don't see that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think a, a week and a half... Without, is promote, without promoting him, he's, they've got to promote him to an extent because he's headlining a pay-per-view. But I don't think there's any excessive promotion. That's but I actually think they're probably slightly cautious because he's only on a fight-by-fight -fight basis contract with Matchroom, whereas with Joshua you suspect it's slightly more ingrained and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but with White it seems like he could up and go to top rank or Al Heyman at any point. So I always think they slightly hold back on, on where he is. Um, two how many rounds will Billy Dib go against Amir Khan this weekend? <laughs> That's don't, mad. Don't know, don't care. <laughs> no interest. I'm not gonna answer that. <laughs> It's just, it's a mad fight. Billy Dibbs a bloody featherweight, isn't he? It's ridiculous. Who's older? He's due to fight Jamie Spate once on a high undercard. He was. <laughs> at, at, at super featherweight, and now he's fighting Emmy Khan. It's ludicrous. Yep. Who's older, Samuel Peter or Luis Ortiz? They're both in the 70s, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Man, why do you feel it's such a mad card? Definitely going to watch it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Boxing domination. Young man. You remember, we got somebody on that as well. You have, haven't you? So you'd have been, we'll cover, we'll cover that on it. But yeah. yeah. Mad. <laughs> um, boxing domination. Young man who was at your call on Saturday night, I think, in, uh, interviewed you. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. Um, young Asian lad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, really, 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 really nice lad. So if you're on Twitter or whatever, get behind him. Full credit, get, be, get behind boxing domination because he's a young man yeah. to trying to make his way in boxing. So full, full credit to him. Yeah. yeah, and he was just hanging around changing rooms as well, waiting for the opportunity. Yeah, like, yeah, not yeah, like yeah, me, he was a bit rude right. and was like, yeah, yeah. come on. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think Josh push me in. Um, but yeah, well, Jen, yeah. good man. Um, what was the change in training for this fight to other fights? It's to you, Nick. Uh, went the full round, uh, 10 rounds sharp and increased the level of pressure as the rounds went by. Very impressive. Thank you. So what was the change in training for this fight compared to others? Um, obviously, change of trainer, been with Josh Byrne, and this was our second fight together, so we gelled a lot more. But obviously, the first fight, we didn't have a long time to gel, but we've been working with each other a lot longer now. Um, and obviously, we just we knew we was going into a 10 round fight with someone who moves a lot, like Dana Mendes does, very good at moving. So, we had to increase you know, work rate, um, stamina had to be increased, so a lot more running, longer round sparring. Oh, was it more running then? More running, longer rounds, sparring, you know, so we knew we had to be the fittest we've ever been, so we had to really push on this camp. Yeah. yeah. 
Do you notice as a boxer the kind of change in physical shape and feeling of changing from presumably a more weight-based, kind of strength-based yeah. training camp yeah. through to a, a fitness and stamina training camp? Yeah, I mean, um, I was working with Dave Towsley, he's my strength and conditioning coach. I've been doing a bit of strength and conditioning as well, but we weren't really f we weren't really worried about too much weight because obviously I'm quite, you know, my body's quite solid, I feel strong. Yeah. We're just mainly focused on doing the rounds, making sure I'm fit. Um, so it was, it was a bit, it was a bit of both, I'd say. Yeah. It was a bit of both, yeah. Do you ever, because you're one of the shorter cruiserweights yeah. out there, yeah. but you're so, we were discussing it earlier, so thick set, like just a, a square almost, yeah. where some cruiserweights might be heavier on top yeah. and lighter on yeah. the bottom. Yeah. Has there ever been a debate about whether you could get yourself, uh, I, th I know you're probably going to tell me not a chance yeah. in hell, but yeah. down to like light heavyweight. Yeah, I mean, if I chop one of my legs off, probably. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Dave Allen, then we asked yeah. him, could you make it to cruiserweight? Yeah, is no, that... I couldn't make it. I, I used to box as um, as an amateur, I used to box at 86. Right. But going back 10 years, so yeah. obviously my body has matured, and I was 86. Now if I've got my 80 kilos, it's impossible. I won't be able to make it. Yeah. So I see the stay at cruiserweight, or just pack on a hell of a lot of weight and go to heavyweight one day. <laughs> Do you make 200 <laughs> pounds quite easy? Um, I would say I do make it easy, but that's because I'm I, I am I do keep my body in condition all year round. I don't yeah. I don't I don't you know balloon. You don't up. drink, do no, you? No, I don't then? drink. So I mean, I'm still I'm still training after my fight. Two days after, I'm still training. So it just shows that I do keep myself in good condition. So I make it easier than I make it easier for myself keeping in shape. Yeah, I think it's easier to maintain rather than to have it to get it back. Yeah, if you lose something, get it back. It's gonna be. You know, it's not really yeah, it's hopefully not, prolong your career. Yeah, you well. know, like kind of like Ricky Hatton used to just balloon, yeah. lose weight, balloon, lose weight. It's not really good for the body. I'd rather keep myself at a certain, you know, certain weight. Yeah. Uh, boxing domination on Twitter again. It's a question for Steve Goodwin. Now that Nick has won the Southern Area Cruiserweight title, is there a plan of getting him the winner of Dion Juma versus Wadi Camacho for some time early next year? Great show, by the way, on Saturday. No. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Nick and I discussed this when we when we did our our one to one piece of there are plans but they're not plans you're going to divulge in any way as yet. Yeah, but it doesn't. That's not that's not part. Of, well, we've had a meeting today, haven't we, Nick? And yeah. that is not part of what we've discussed. All right, um, Daniel Smith is back. Sorry for a bit of a long one, but <laughs> as a manager. If your client, boxer, was a well-supported fighter, does or would Steve prefer the fighter not to be tied into a promotional deal with, for example, Matchroom? So then it is easier to get fights without having TV platforms restricting a fight being made. And are promoter deals better for fighters still trying to establish their name rather than a fighter who is well-known and it is then more restrictive if an opponent is signed to different networks? That is a brilliant question. It, it, Daniel comes out with some questions. That is questions. a brilliant question. He's okay. already got two free tickets for September, so you can't That is a brilliant anymore. question. Okay. Point one was, I think, is it better if you've got somebody who's got um, who's got that sort of support not to have a promotion? Let me just get it right for you. As a manager, if your client was a well-supported fighter, does so Steve should prefer... We, shall we put client to as Florian Marku? Well, the hell I wrote back to him. I'm sure there's a very relevant... So we can let's use Florian Marku. <laughs> yeah. So Florian Marku is not tied long term to anybody. But he's fighting this weekend. On the Frank Warren show? Yep. I can't discuss the contractual terms because I'm not allowed to, but he's fighting on the Frank Warren show this weekend. Yep. He's not going to be on TV, is he? No, he's off TV this weekend. But there are plans in the future that there of will course. be another platform that will take him and put him on TV. Because that's what Florian wants to do. Florian wants to be a TV fighter. So. If we signed, let's say I signed tomorrow a contract with Matrim, let's say I did, and he might sit on Matrim for six fights off TV. Yeah. That's not what he wants. So I don't want to commit to a, to a six fight deal. I'm just using six fight deal as a thing. A six fight deal, a three fight deal, or a ten fight deal with no TV coverage, yeah. no TV guarantee. Because he doesn't, because he can. He doesn't need to commit to that. So we're going to see how we get on this week with Frank and his team. And I'm sure they can talk afterwards about another fight and whatever. But there's other, there's a lot of people interested in Florian. And so therefore, I've got to represent him in the best way possible. If I committed long term to anybody, 
I'm giving up something that everybody wants him. So consequently, why do you need to commit to somebody long term when you're in demand? The reason boxers commit to promoters is when they need the financial backing of a promoter yeah. to get them towards titles or get them somewhere. If you don't need the financial backing of a promoter and you're delivering financial rewards to a promoter, they need you more than you need them. Yeah. It's a different ballgame title. And so with Florian, I mean, he's still very early into his career, isn't he? Was he three fights in? Yeah. Um, and so he still sells bundles of tickets and... Yeah. To that end, he doesn't need it. But if he were to start moving through the titles, for instance, it may be that it's then bilateral that a, a, a TV promoter could help him in some Correct. way. Correct. And at that point, he will need them probably more than they need him. Yeah. So there becomes a switch of emphasis. But I think the, the, thing, will, the thing will be, we'll, we'll suck it and see, and we'll decide where he ends up. But I'm sure that he will at some point um, hook up not necessarily with a massively long-term deal, but with a deal with a promoter, with a, a more substantial deal with a promoter. Have other promoters other than Frank Warren shown a, oh God, an yeah. interest? Oh, God, yeah. My father, my, uh, it's red hot. How many, you know, yeah. Yeah. I knew the answer to that anyway. Um, <laughs> would we be able to see Nick Parper? By the way, he's still, he's still thinking of going back and doing another York Hall one. Is he? Yeah. He still quite like doing the York Hall ones. He's still thinking of going and doing another York Hall show. I was chatting with the, um, <laughs> the MC, Mike um, Connolly, brilliant, brilliant MC, did a brilliant job, I chatted to him afterwards at your call on the way out, he was saying, he was very self-critical, saying that he hadn't got some of the pronunciations, I said, honestly, I didn't notice a thing, and I think he does a brilliant job, Mike, yeah. um, but he was saying when he did uh, one of Florian's show, I don't know if it was the first or the second, yeah. he said he gets the mic and he says, your call, are you ready? Yeah. He went, Albania, are you ready? And he said the place just like, they surged forward. He was like, <laughs> shit. Uh, <laughs> don't be that ready. <laughs> no, but he's actually thinking, he's still, that's not ruled out yet. He wants to keep that option available, especially, you know, especially as, um, if t if he gets TV because TV may may follow him about, so he he wants at the moment to keep every option out until he feels he said. What do, and I will say this one more thing: the the the, the give at the moment he's delivering promoters money, right? He wants some promoter to show him some form of love for him, yeah, as love for him as a fighter. Yeah. At the moment, all they all they see, rightfully so, is a pound note. Yeah. But the point is, he when a promoter genuinely f shows some love towards him not just for the money, and the money's part of it, right? Then I think that'll be when he sort of commits a bit. Yeah, it's fair enough, it's a relationship, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, Boxing Domination. Would we be able to see Nick Parper fighting the winner of Ultimate Boxer soon, if that is on the radar, or is there other fighters you're looking at? I would personally love to see Nick versus Robin Dupre as a first defence, as Dupre is durable and can give good rounds. But he won't pay. But they won't pay. Yeah. So I'm not putting Nick in with Robin Dupre off TV where Nick is supposed to pay for Robin Dupre. That's ridiculous. And I know Robin Dupre will not make, has not made an offer to fight Nick Parper. If they'd like to make a financial offer, then it's something we would consider. Yeah. But there's no way that Nick is going to... Nick is ranked six on box rate, Robin Dupre is 24. Nick gets nothing out of that fight. Six on box rate, how does that feel? It's not good enough yet. <laughs> it's not good enough. Yeah. It's good, but I want number one spot. Nice, I like that. Question from Heavens Above on Twitter. Question to Nick. Was there a risk that the ref was gonna stop the fight last night and what was the problem? Um I was I was um I was worried. I don't think he was gonna stop it, but basically there was a lump back on my head, just behind my ear. Um I don't know how it was caused. I th I believe it might have been an accident or elbow, I'm not sure. Um I have to watch it back. But um, kept checking it, but um, doctor said it was fine, so just let me carry on. Yeah. Yeah. But I was I was worried because obviously I didn't want the contest to um, to stop because of that. It's quite funny. We were chatting about this off camera and yeah. your view of like, please let me carry on. Yeah. Like, you mental. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's wrong with you people? Yeah, it's, um, it's fine. It's pride. You know. No, it is, it? Whether you're you know whether you're cut, whether you're hurt, you're gonna fight on. Most yeah. Well, not everyone does, but. People yeah. with heart do. But if I've gone through six rounds in that heat and 
someone gives me a potential like out, I might be going, yeah, all right, cool. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 let's go to the scorecards, because yeah. I should be up. <laughs> um, speaking of the heat, Heavens Above also asked, was the temperature inside your call acceptable, and what was it like for the boxes under the lights? I'd say it's not acceptable. I, I, I don't know what you would do about it, other than whack a massive air con. The problem with the venue, I'm going to answer in a minute, the problem with the venue, They've taken money off of boxing and many events for many, many years. They take, they earn a, they earn a lot of money coming in. They've up the, the prices for hire have gone up year on year, far in excess of inflation, and they've virtually doubled in the last three or four years. Is that, do you think, in line with the increase in interest in boxing and the increase in promoters around the area? Do you know what? That supply and demand is fine. But then spend some fucking money on the venue and make it decent for boxers and, and supporters. Because the place is the, a great boxing venue, but it's a shithole. And <laughs> it's a shithole in the dressing it rooms. It's a shithole in the dressing yeah. rooms. It's a shithole in the bar. Yeah. It's a shithole everywhere. For me, I love the venue for boxing, yeah. but it should be better for boxers to fight in. It should be, they should have more, they, they shouldn't, one of the dressing rooms, dressing room number one, had the heating on for the last two weeks and they couldn't turn it off. So boxers were in a dressing room where the heating wasn't switched well, off. It was like 25, 26 degrees. Well, that room apparently was 51 degrees. Boxers had to come out no. and, go and, train and go and warm up in the car park outside mm. on that night. They could have gone in a weight division lower. How bad is that? But that's genuinely bad. And it was bad last week as well. That he, when it was really bad, they had it. Yeah. The next week, it back again. They hadn't fixed it. But that's really bad that's because bad. you boys are all, to an element, you're dehydrated. Yeah. Because yeah. you know you've, and I'm talking even before the fight. Yeah. Like you've had yeah. to make that weight, yeah. and there's an element of water coming out of your system to make that weight. Yeah. I'm not saying that you all like strip the water off, mm -hmm. but to some level, you will. Yeah. To then have to go and sit in a 50 degree changing room that's yeah. not on but the thing is you can't blame the people the people that work there do their very best they do, they're and nice there's some people. good people there right but the powers that be above who are generating the cash are not letting them spend the money yeah is there a risk to boxers fighting in such heat does it get the best out of them and the paying public Nicolas said he's fighting he's fighting but remember last yeah. week it was 10 degrees hotter yeah yeah I mean that would have been a killer it, it was very hard, uh, you know, from my personal experience, to f when I fought Daniel on the weekend, I'm sure we were both feeling it, but for the crowd, they, was, they were complaining it was too hot, so imagine the boxers, like, doing 10 rounds. Yeah. You know, me and Daniel were well, both muscular guys, we're both over 14 stone, we need our oxygen. I'm over 14 stone, I need my oxygen, I was yeah. bloody sweltering, I mean, <laughs> and you were fighting. It's difficult, because in between the rounds, you need oxygen, you know, you need to breathe, I could see Daniel from across the ring, he was struggling to breathe. Did you I keep an eye on him? Yeah, I was just having a little look over, he looked like he was you know, hyperventilating in a way, so I was, you know, I was struggling, as well, it was really hot, really hot, there was no fresh air, really hot, obviously, and there's risk of dehydration, and God forbid, Got a bit, but that's how um, brain damage is caused. It's from your You're brain right. being dehydrated. The lack of water yeah. between the brain yeah, and, and you know we hit hard. Anyone over fourteen stone will hit hard. Yeah. Um, question from Paul in the punch. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Why do you have public workouts? Not you, but why are public workouts and press conferences always during the day? Because the press, as in the major press, won't go there in the evening. Because they're normally working for, not to about IFL TV, but if you're talking about major press. Which they the, are, to the be fair, to the, the mainstream is different to the The, yeah, the video, mainstream press are not, are not going to, when they were on 9 to 5 or 9 to 6 jobs, they're not going to go to about 8 o'clock at night. But, on the other hand, playing devil's advocate to that, IFL are more influential in boxing than the Daily Mail. Yeah, true. Like, how, how, many people watch, in the how many people watch an IFL video compared to how many people read a column about boxing in the Daily Mail? I would say IFL... But I feel we're going to turn up whenever it is, right? So... Yeah, so why not do it in the evening when I'm not at work, people aren't at work. And can go and watch it. Yeah. Yeah, so mm. I don't know what... Because I think they're playing to the main... I think they're historically playing yeah. to the mainstream. Is it just they do it because they've always done it that way? I think so. Think? Yeah. All right. I said I would try and remember to answer. Ask it, and I have. I'm quite proud of myself. Uh, Oliver McManus, how did Sarge come about to be on the Amir Khan undercard? Um, basically, he had a call from the people over there because they're doing it's, it's they're trying to do this specific concept, and he fitted into the criteria, and they offered a 
good amount of money and for him despite of how bizarre the whole situation is and it is bizarre um he felt it was worth worth going over there absolutely they, they wanted him there like three weeks before wasn't it through he's been over there now for nearly think three weeks three and a half weeks before he had to go over th so he's had to give up a month his coach had to give up a month so it isn't as good a thing as you think but he seems to be that he's having a great time and a great experience good on him but i think the best thing to do is we'll get him on here when he gets back and let him talk about it and see what it was really like that'd be brilliant yeah. let's do that mm. you going over for it no <laughs> are you going to be with florian on saturday yes all right slightly nearer yeah. Oliver McManus most importantly it was lovely to finally meet Martin on Saturday but who was Christian he kept mistaking me for right <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> no it was my fuck up frankly uh, <laughs> firstly apologies to Oliver I did meet him on Saturday I, I, I clocked him I was really busy on Saturday because I was doing um, a second role in Umar's corner I was doing commentary upstairs uh, for two fights, which we'll talk about later or another part of this. Um, I was doing interviews backstage and um, I was actually trying to watch the boxing. But I, I said to Oliver, I'll, I'll find you in a bit and I'll come sit with you. And I did. And then like my head was in 20 different places, like I called him Christian. <coughs> so it was completely and utterly my is fault. It, is, there, is there been a Christian that's been a man crush or something? No, there was a, I'll tell you what, there's a, there a guy on Twitter that I often uh, interact with and message with, Christian Alcorn, who oh, okay. is a really nice guy, and Oliver's a really nice guy. And just in that moment, my head What's went and I was calling him Christian. So apologies just remember, entirely. Just don't, just make sure that next time you make love to your wife that you don't get her name up because you're all in trouble. For in about three years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, she's not watching this. Nah, she doesn't watch it, it's fine. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we were discussing this before uh, Nick fought on Saturday night about boxers not um, fornicating with their other halves before they fight. Oh, did you? It's quite interesting. Yeah. Do you avoid? I, I avoided for a whole month, four weeks. Oh, did you? Yeah. He's a married man, that's normal. Oh, I'm not, yeah. So, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not married yet, actually. Uh, that's true, actually. Yeah. So you're engaged. I'm engaged, yeah, but do you know what? It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. I bet it is after four weeks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to leave it in there. I'm not going to let them cut that bit. Uh, like, uh, but yeah, no, because your brother, wasn't it, was in the change room, was saying that it's actually like, it's yeah. a discipline thing as much as yeah, anything else. It's it's, it is a discipline thing. Um, it's a, you just feel, you're kind of so sexually frustrated that you can take that frustration out in the ring. So yeah, and it's a discipline thing as well, yeah. Yeah, because Umar Sadiq was saying he's done the same thing before and he used yeah. to have an argument with somebody with about coach, it. Yeah. Um, who said basically like, if you don't use something in your body, you lose it. Yeah. So by not using that testosterone, where does it go? It just, yeah. it goes. So you're not benefiting yourself. It doesn't build up. It's not like you, you can build it and build it. And he said, I haven't got a scientific argument against yeah. that. Yeah. So if anyone out there does and they want to help out for uh, maybe for next week we can discuss this. Yeah, can I just can I just say um, my coach Josh Burnham? He said um, he used to have sex to bail the fight. He did, didn't he? The morning did he? Fight. So yeah, so he used to work for Josh. So I might try that one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't need to ask about that, Trevor. Trevor. Oh God <laughs> Almighty! Um, he said to me last week to scale the subject. He said to me that. Because I I divulged, he was so embarrassed that I divulged his dolly shrine. But he said to me that the friendship is over. <laughs> he said, I can't ever be friends with you again. He said, I always thought as a friend that you'd never give up his darkest seats. So I've got a friend of mine, yeah, a really friend of Trevor Hobson, a VIP bar. Yeah. One of his bedrooms at home yeah. is a Dolly Parton shrine, and nobody's had in it. It's like 30, 40 pictures of Dolly Parton yeah. all I'm over the wall. Cool. And he has his shrine, and if you go there and stay there and you sleep in, the, in that third room, yeah. all you've got is Dolly Parton everything everywhere. Yeah. And I told everybody last week, and then he went absolutely bananas that I told everybody <laughs> about this secret. Anyway, but we carry on. The answer to that is don't have a Dolly Parton shrine. <laughs> um, Oliver McManus again. Nick told me he expected to have to chase after Daniel Dem. Start this again. Nick told me he expected to have to chase after Daniel Mendes. So was he surprised at how he managed to control the distance from the off? Um, obviously, I knew I had to chase Daniel because he's a good mover. And we're aware of that. But um, I'm not too surprised because I know I can cut the ring off quite well. 
and obviously something we practiced a lot in sparring and training, part of the tactics. So um, I'll be honest, I was slightly surprised it was working well, but I expected it also at the same time. But it's good to know it works. Yeah, it's good to know it works. All right, yeah. uh, Oliver. Again, what consideration does Steve put into a running order? Okay, so you're looking at how competitive the fights are, who sold the tickets. Um, so, for example, if you have for this show last week when I did it, the three last fights had sold. It was it was just going to be the best atmosphere. So I pinned the three. We were originally we don't normally have title fights at the end. We have yeah. in the middle, but because I thought the fights were so good, and because the support would be so good and the public would stay to watch the Nick fight and the Curtis fight, um, more so the Nick fight, um, they were at the end. Then the rest of the card, it's like a build up. You will put at the front, if a boxer particularly wants to go early, Kieran Leinster was on first, he asked to go on first. Um, then you start to put on the least competitive fights and maybe the boxers who haven't sold as well. And then you build the night to a crescendo so the fights get better. The Andrew Bevelacqua I knew would be a great fight. That was near the title fights. So the heavyweight fight, which would have been a really good fight, was pitched originally yeah. <coughs> towards the title fights. So you, if you notice that the fights just got better and better as the night went yeah. on, didn't they? It was good seeing Conor Ben down as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, Oliver again. Um, what was it like being in the corner? So that was to me, actually. I never answer questions on here. I try and avoid it. Um, yeah, so it was my first time working a corner with a friend of mine, Omar Sadiq, who uh, kindly agreed to let me come and uh, help out. And that's literally all it was, right? Is helping out, is getting a stool in, is holding. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was fat. Do you know what? Like, it was a privilege, an honour. Um, as someone who's a massive fan of the sport, and I know loads of boxers, that's not being like big headed, but just I'd be around boxers, but actually to be a part of them getting into the ring and being a part of that journey, just for the one night with Umar, it's just a real privilege. And to be around his coaching team, it was so, you know, they know Umar inside out and they know, you know, the time they want to get him there, when they want him drinking a coffee, when they want him eating fruits, when all the, as much as Umar knows it himself and, you know, watching them train and warm up in that changing room, watching the relationship between boxers in the changing room was just a fascinating thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't know there was a general rule about whoever's fighting next controls the speaker in the changing room. So if you've got three lads in the changing room. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so like, if you've got three lads sharing a changing room, whoever's fighting next gets the playlist oh, okay. whilst yeah. they get warmed up. Yeah. I never knew that until Saturday night. Um, yeah. But as it happened, Umar had an all right playlist. Yeah, do you know what? I was going to say that shout out to Umar because his playlist <laughs> was um, really good actually. He left, he left <laughs> a speaker for us while he, while he was out there fighting and yeah, top quality. Yeah, so just stuff like that, like getting those little insights and seeing Umar, because Umar's a, a very thoughtful, spiritual individual, seeing how he prepares his mind before he gets into the... All that stuff was just... It was brilliant. So actually, like, the... You know, the six rounds that he was fighting almost flew by. It was the other stuff that was so fascinating to be there and witness. But there you go. Hope that's not too corny or cheesy or anything like that. Um, we'll go back to heavens above. We've got three more questions. Question to Nick. The winner by a country mile, as per the scorecards, but was he surprised that Mendes really didn't unleash anything until the last round? I assume that his uppercut was his key weapon. Um, yeah, I mean, his uppercut was good, he had the uppercut, um, I wasn't, I really didn't know the tactics Mendes was going to take in this fight, I really didn't know, I just thought, if I had to guess, I would, I would have thought that he was going to just wait and pick me off as I came in, um, as you can see, because the old me would just charge in, Yeah. Like, you know, I only knew one way, that was forward, not back, so I would, you know, he, would may, he may have expected me to just charge in all the time. So I expected him to maybe pick me off as, as I'm coming in and then move, because we know he's a good mover. Um, but yeah, no, I think that was uh, pretty much it, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, what next for Ricky Heavens? Must have been disappointing for such a late pullout. Well, he's gut it was gutting for him that his rematch didn't take place, but he's had 10 fights. He's 21 years of age. He's had yeah. 10 fights at the age of 21. He's nowhere near the finished article. I am going to build him just like I would my own son and I will build him. The only time that it went wrong for Ricky was when I didn't want him to go up to six rounds. They did and he lost. 
He will now be built the way we need to be built. I want a rematch with Dwayne Green next, and then after that, I'll put him up. We'll put him up to six rounds again. But we're not pushing for titles. We're not pushing for anything. We're just going to develop him. And when we press the button, it'll be the right time for him. And he's still got a strong support behind him, so yeah. there's no need to rush him through fights he doesn't want to take. Take the time, and Ricky will get there. Yeah. Final question. Um, no ring girls. No. Was there a reason? Yeah. Which was too much money. All right. Fair I enough. Like as well, no. So know. basically, what happened? The, the ring girls thing. So. You've only got so much. You're running on. You're running a promotion like that on a budget. You're running on a like the profit and loss is very tight, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> we started to spend money on other directions, which we've tried to do on video, and which I sh we've yeah, spoken yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, now, right? So we're going to start to do money on that. And we used to get originally. We used to get Spearmint Wine. I used to sponsor the girls, so they used to cost nothing. Yeah. Then they cost seventy pound each. We paid that. And then they said, oh, we're withdrawing the subsidy now, it's going to be £120 each. So that's now £240. Now we have the screens, which actually highlight the ring numbers on the screens. Yeah. yeah. So, so I sat there and thought, look, we've got the screens that we spent a fortune of money on, which, which shows you every round as it's going. It flush, so you can look at the screen and see what round you're on. Why on earth do I need to spend £240 on somebody walking around the ring telling you what's on the screen? Yeah. yeah. There becomes a point where at 120 pound, well, yeah, okay, but you can swallow it. But now it's going up and up and up. I just thought I just don't see the point anymore. If you don't have the screens, I think you have the ring girls. When you have the screens, I didn't see the point of having the screens showing the round numbers and paying ring girls. And I'd rather spend the money on different resources. Do you fear it takes anything away from the uh, experience of a boxing fan? I don't, well the thing was, did you know that was interesting? There's been three Goodwin shows with no ring girls now in a row. And the last one was the only time anybody's mentioned it. Right. They said, the first two times I was saying afterwards, nobody's mentioned no <laughs> ring girls. This time a lot of people have mentioned ring girls, somebody mentioned to me as ringside. But from the point of view is, I don't, you've got the round numbers behind them on the screens. Yeah. So what's, the, unless you want to see women in the ring just to gawp at them, but then you go to yeah. strip club if you want that. <laughs> yeah. Go go to a strip club and for lap dance. You don't need to I don't need to pay for your titillation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that anyway, of course. Uh, do you notice it as a boxer that um, there are ring girls? Yeah, you do, you do notice it sometimes because when you've got an arse in your face it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> distract you. Yeah, I think it's a good thing that there was no ring girls because it's like you said, it doesn't distract you. But and you're four weeks out at that point. Yeah. You know, you, <laughs> you don't, don't want any. <laughs> no, actually, no, actually, so if I, we do a show and yeah. there's no screens up, I would have ring girls. Okay. Yeah. I would have, joking, all the jokes aside, I think it, it keeps people informed. Yeah, and it keeps people informed, but I don't see any point of having it yeah. when you've got it off screen. There we go. The screens are good, I like screens. Yeah. Do yeah. it make you feel a bit special, different to other small hall shows? With the screens? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just modernised, it's modernised boxing. Those steps when you come down, yeah, the yeah. smoke behind you. Yeah, I mean, even matching, they don't even do that. When they have, no, you're right. when they do boxing at your call, they just have the standard walk over the side. Yeah. You know, it's really special, really special. It's like it's such an experience. Awesome. Yeah. Right, so there we go. That's all the questions. So thank you very much for everyone that sent one in. It's very much appreciated. Um, and that's it for the week. So we'll be back next week. But thank you very much to Nick. It didn't have to come in here today, really, a few no, days I, after winning this really title. I really appreciate you having me on. Thank you so much. No, it's all right. It's, uh, it's great. And yeah, thank you for bringing the belt up that's and great. giving everybody an insight to what it was like on Saturday night. Yeah, my and, pleasure. Uh, thank you. And appreciate we'll watch you progress through the, uh, the division and onwards and upwards. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.